This is my JAMA game cabinet, which takes standard JAMA boards as well as boards with extra buttons. It has a 32 inch LCD TV. As you can see, it has a standard six button per player layout, and I've also added two extra buttons up top. One is for free coins, and the other is to switch games for Neo Geo. Purists will prefer the CRTs, but I personally like LCDs because you generally don't have to do much to make them work. You just need a small little converter board and to adjust it from time to time for each game. With CRTs, since they're so old these days, they tend to have a lot of problems. A lot of times they need capacitors replaced, or they might even need new components on the chassis board. Me, I'm practical, and I just like things to work, so I go with LCDs. Inside the machine, you'll see that we have an audio amplifier for the speakers, an arcade power supply to power everything, and an RGB to VGA converter board. Since this is an LCD TV, it doesn't take straight RGB signals, so we have to convert it using that board. The coin acceptor is interesting on this machine. You can put whatever coin you want right here and adjust it so that it will use whichever coin you want it to. So you could have your own custom coins printed and even use those in this machine if you wanted. The top shelf has room to store your game and has the JAMA harness. I've also built adapters for the extra buttons so that I can easily plug in and change games. Since the JAMA standard only supports three buttons per player, this is necessary for games such as Street Fighter II and other popular fighters. Before I owned this cab, I had a converted Street Fighter II, which I really liked, but it was just kind of a hassle to deal with. It was really heavy, hard to move, and the CRT had some issues that needed to be resolved. So overall, I like this cab a whole lot better. It's on casters, so you can move it wherever you want. It's way easier to change out games because it's got a huge door in the front with the shelf, and it works when you turn it on. That's really all I need. Also, I like being able to sit down when I play games. Call me old. JAMA is a standard that was created in 1985. It defines a standard connector and wiring scheme. This was to allow arcade operators to easily convert arcade machines from one game to another without rewiring the machine. Games made without the JAMA standard have their own wiring scheme and cannot be easily switched to other games. Most JAMA arcade boards look something like this. This is a CPS-1 Street Fighter 2. It has your standard JAMA edge connector, and it's got a connector for the extra buttons since the JAMA standard is only three buttons per side. Later on, Capcom came out with the CPS-2 system, which used interchangeable cartridges. Again, it has your standard JAMA edge connector and a connector for the extra buttons, as well as RCA connectors for your stereo. There are different motherboards and different cartridges that go on them. There's blue, green, gray, orange, yellow, and all-in-ones. The blue and the green are interchangeable, but the others need the right color board. This is a US cartridge of Marvel Super Heroes vs. Street Fighter. Put together, it makes for a pretty large system. This is a CPS-2 motherboard for the Asian region outside of Japan. You can see how the connector is different than it was on the US board. CPS-2 boards also came with locks that you could clip onto the side that would hold the A and the B board together. They're not really necessary because you're not going to be moving them around a lot. SNK popularized the use of cartridges in an arcade game setting with the Neo Geo system. This is a Neo Geo MV-1B. It has headphone and speaker volume controls right on it, along with control ports in case you wanted to bring your Neo Geo controller from home and plug it in at the arcade. SNK also made multi-slot Neo Geo boards where you could plug in more than one game at a time and have the player select which game they wanted to play. This is a two-slot board which features volume sliders for the headphone, speaker, controller port, and even a slot for the memory card so you could save your game at the arcade and bring it home and continue playing. The most popular Neo Geo board is probably the MV1C. This is a small board with no extra connections or features, but is used as a budget alternative. 
When you see systems that are consolized, they're usually using this board inside of them. Neo Geo cartridges were gigantic. Compare the size of one of these with the regular NES game, and you can see just how big they are. The last board I'm going to show off is the Capcom CPS-3, which ran six games. Warzard, also known as Red Earth, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure 1 and 2, and three different versions of Street Fighter 3. This is a CPS-3 system. It used cartridges for security. The cartridges didn't hold the game. What held the game is a full CD-ROM. A SCSI CD-ROM, uh, good luck finding one of those these days. And to power the CD-ROM, you also needed an external power supply. It's not fun to hook up, therefore I don't play Street Fighter 3 all that often. This video is not a comprehensive guide to arcades and JAMA, but just a short introduction where we went over the important aspects briefly. If we missed anything, or there's something you want to know more about, comment below, or come check us out at lostclassicvgs.com, and I'll answer some questions in a follow-up video. There's one more video coming out in our arcade series, which will be all about my Raspberry Pi-based MAME machine. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss it, and thanks for watching.